All right, so I'm just going to test real quick. Am I live on my... It says live. Hold on. Give me one sec. Okay. Huh, I can't see myself on... Huh, let me see. Where am I live on? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. That's <Jesus>. okay. <laughs> Where am I live on? Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, it's working. I think <laughs> it's just unexpected. So, yeah, I'm, I was not prepared for this, but this was a way too good of an opportunity that I could not pass. So, oh, yeah, just want no to test either. one more thing real quick. I'm pretty sure I am. No, hold on. Hmm. Hold. On. What the heck? This is embarrassing. This is a live stream and I'm doing this so unprofessionally. <laughs> but it's all good. I'll make up for it with my wonderful questions that I'll be asking. Huh. That's weird. Oh, so right. sorry. My speakers cut out again. Oh, your speakers cut out. Oh. There. Sweet. I found out if I tap the bass, they start working again. I'm just trying to figure out where, where I'm live. Like, I, I have two Facebook accounts. Like, one of them is my personal account, account yeah. and I don't want to, like, go live there, and I'm trying to make sure that I'm not live there. But, like, it doesn't show me that I'm live on my spiritual Facebook account. So I'm, like, just, oh, gosh, where am I live at? I'm just trying to figure out what I selected. Like, there's no way for me to tell. <laughs> oh, really? it's, it's rolling right now, but I can't really tell where I'm live at. Huh. Um, like, can you, hold on. And I can't see anybody on, too. Like, there's zero, it's just showing no one's watching. Yeah, it says private. Is, the, is it private? Hold on. I it says private. Oh, it says private chat private chat hmm so nobody's what where am i live at what did i select it hmm. so it's not showing that i'm live on my facebook Huh, this is unusual. And nobody is watching. So what does that mean? <laughs> Darn it. We're streaming to the ether. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. It is shown that I'm live. It's just nobody's. Oh, wait. It, it does say it's private. Yeah. Why is that? I don't know. Does this say that it's private? I must have. Hold on. Let me go to settings real quick. General. So you said on Skype when it records it, you can't upload? Yeah, yeah. I, I had that issue before and like an opportunity like this. I don't want to like ruin it. So, you know. I just, it's just that, like, I just don't have, like, the, besides my phone, I don't have the proper uh, um, camera equipment and whatnot. Right. Okay, I think we're good now. Okay. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> I think we're finally live. Okay, so apologies for the first three minutes of um, technical issues and me trying to figure out what's going on. Apologies for that, folks. Oh, no um, worries. Dude. I believe we are good now. Regardless of what's going on, well, yeah, some, I see it shows that someone's watching, so we're good. So um, to those of you that don't know, this is Chris Fazio. He is a phenomenal um, 
how should I describe you? A Nigong adept, uh, telekinetic. I'm not sure how to describe you properly, but all I can say is um, Wendy and Rob, the two seen without eyes teachers, um, have discovered a phenom and he popped up in one of the facebook groups i'm a i'm a admin of and i was like oh it's that guy that i was like just looking at the other day and i was like i i man like this guy's phenomenal i wish i can contact him and stuff and we started chatting and he was kind enough to join us today um like i said i wasn't gonna do these interviews and stuff like that but when a phenom like Chris and like a great opportunity like this presents itself. You just can't turn it down. So I decided to do one more interview with Chris Fazio. So ladies and gentlemen, this is Chris. Um, Antonio's watching. Thanks Antonio. Like I said, you know, just uh, wasn't going to do these interviews for a while. If not, if you know, I don't know, maybe, ne maybe never, but this might be my last one that I'll do. But like I said, this guy, I wanted to talk to this guy and like, he was like, let's just do an interview. You know, while we're talking, it's like, it's like, I'm asking him a million questions and yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it's, yeah it seemed like me, I was doing an interview as it is. So it's like, ah, oh, why, why not make it public, you know? And I'll just right. ask him a bunch of questions. So, so, um, could you just briefly introduce yourself to the public, to those, uh, the view that no, have no clue who you are? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, my name is Chris Fazio. I've been, um, a Nigong practitioner for the past uh, nine years now. Um, started out by my friend was backpacking across South America and uh, stayed with a, a hermit that pretty much lives in the middle of nowhere. And he told me that this guy threw him without touching him. And <clears throat> I asked if he was on drugs because I didn't believe any of that. Um, but I had to reach out. So I started talking to this guy, Steve, and um, he was telling me about some things that I just considered unbelievable before, um, you know, l levels of, I guess, energy in the body that can be unlocked just through practices of emptying the mind, different ancient movements um, that have been discovered by monks of different lineages throughout the years. Um, but I was hooked and I started practicing immediately. And, um, these are kind of just side effects that I've discovered, um, telekinesis, electrokinesis, um, you know, the ability to influence objects, uh, without touching them. Um, you know, just minor side effects, but still very fun. Awesome, dude. So to those of you that don't know, he's, this is his teacher. Um, right here. Yeah. Um, this uh, guy, Steve Gray, I have his book. I read it. It's phenomenal. And uh, yeah, man, like it's definitely worth the read. Um, so like I said, I wasn't prepared for questions, but I personally had a lot of questions that I wanted to ask him. Um, so basically, you know, you often, you know, there's a lot of, I see comments um, from some people asking you, you know what I mean? Different Facebook groups and stuff like that. They're asking you like, Hey, so how do you do what you do? You often say, you know, I've done meditation for eight years and that's how you basically essentially unlocked your abilities and stuff like that. Um, but I mean, like, you know, me as a practitioner, I mean, I, I know just meditation can't get you to, to your level, even if you've done it for eight years, because I mean, otherwise all monks will be, be doomed, doing all this stuff, you know what I mean? So I knew you had, you know, some up your sleeves and like, it just makes now that I'm connecting the dots, it makes sense that you were a Nigong adept and stuff. So um, essentially right now, all you do is pretty much Nigong. Um yeah, uh, all I do is I is I meditate an hour a night, um, and I have done so every single night for the past. Yeah, yeah, it's been nine years now, and um, that's it. It's I mean, there's so many different practices of meditation, and I've got to say, none of them are wrong. It's and who's to say that those those monks that have been meditating their whole life that they can't do these things? They probably can they're just not open mm -hmm. about it. Good I point. mean, I didn't share any of this stuff until very recently because for one, you sound like a nut job and <laughs> yeah, two, yeah, two, sure. who's going to believe you? This stuff is really isolating in a way. I mean, you're led to discoveries that are not your own conscious thought. You're given 
messages from beyond something higher is guiding you eventually and the whole point is just to not think which is a lot harder done than said i mean right so uh in effect any of these books on nigong and qigong um they're all right it just gives your left brain something to do while your right brain and subconscious do the real work which mm -hmm. is to empty yourself to allow god's light to fill you uh mm. it's pretty amazing so so you know i, I briefly looked into um the tian it's called the tian shan ne kung right i yeah. briefly looked into some of his exercises and stuff like that there's certainly a lot of movements and stuff like that um and and correct me if i'm wrong there's uh he's currently publicly making four levels um am i, am I correct on that so far or? Mm -hmm. that's right okay okay so um out of the four levels of um the tian shan ne kung um you know like like uh have you gone beyond the four levels if you will like do you no i help? i'm um i'm not even past the later stages of the second level and um mm -hmm. you know steve is i mean I don't know exactly what Steve's level of attainment is, but it's enough to teleport it right before my eyes, which still is really hard to wrap your brain around. When you see someone do that, and then he's just standing 20 feet away, laughing like a maniac, when an instant before he was directly in front of me. So, yeah, it's still like... Is, like, is there any way, like, you know, next time you go see him or something like that, next time you make, you know go for a visit that you can record this or would he not allow that he wouldn't allow that i mean he only was open enough to share these things with me because he knew that i was serious enough to come out mm -hmm. there and go through his training in the first place which it's not easy to get out there i mean it took us um a full day of travel and it's 50 miles from the nearest town and it's literally in the middle of freaking nowhere in the andes mountains it's in a crater um bordering the amazon rainforest and it is just breathtaking i mean it's so natural and beautiful and you can eat freaking everything that grows out there this fruits that you've never heard of that are just it's a magical place for sure and energetically speaking right. you can feel it that's amazing. So you've been with Tian Shan uh, Qigong and stuff like that. So prior to this, um, you didn't do any Qigong or yoga or anything like that or any kind of meditation? Nothing. Nothing? Wow, that's crazy. So you, the first guy you found is pretty much happens to be like a Nigong supermaster. That's just, that's, that's, or I should say like a true someone that truly inherited the real Nikun. Because like after, you know, Master Steve often, you know, criticizes most of these, you know, uh, so-called Nikung experts that he calls them. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. <laughs> well, actually, before I talked to, before um, I finally made up my mind to go and visit Steve, I had reached out to, oh man, countless self-proclaimed Nikung masters, especially in the <laughs> States, even overseas. And I would have very specific questions to ask them, like, how do you store Yang in the lower Dantian? Mm -hmm. Very, you know, basic question that sh anyone that's a serious practitioner should be able to answer. I mean, there are certain mm -hmm. norms that come that are unanimous across all sects. Mm -hmm. And these people could not answer me. They didn't know what I was talking about. And, you know, even trying to, to ask, like, um, at what point do you raise chi to the brain to become shin and they were like oh no you're born with shin already and so i was like mm -hmm. very contradictory and these people I, I i would ask them in video calls if they could demonstrate very basic telekinesis mm -hmm. for me and they were like oh well that that stuff isn't real i said well then you're not real <laughs> like i mean it's kind of like a benchmark of power, even though it's just a side effect of the right. Of the it's still like if you progress, you'll get these abilities no matter mm -hmm. what. Um, mm -hmm. It's just that it's it's 
kind of a pain. It requires a lot of dedication and it's right. not easy to to sit in silence for an hour when this world is built around busy, busy, busy. Like mm -hmm. it just right. doesn't check it out. Right, right. So Chris, um, you know, you touched upon yin energy and yang energy and stuff like that. Um, you know, I got the Mopai book over there. Um, you know, basically they describe that there's two types of energies and stuff like that. According to Master Steve's video that I watched, he describes the yin energy, the energy that's going down. And like the yang energy is the energy that's rising from your body and stuff like that. Is that the way you see it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can, I, I'm a very scientific minded person. Um, mm -hmm. And so when describing things in spirituality, I really can't connect the dots, but you really can break this down to a science. It There's the core of the earth is a rotating gigantic ball of superheated iron. That's it, it, as it's, it's rotating magnetic fields and we have to exist within these laws of physics um, between Earth and space, um, which, you know, are pretty much yin and yang. Um, yang comes from the Earth. It's the expansion portion of the energy. And the opposite of that is contraction. And that's, in essence, what yin and yang is it's expansion contraction heat cold light dark um and you can your body in essence is like a battery and you can raise your charge or your capacitance while you're here on earth and the hard part is is people ask me like why is it sitting in silence is the thing that actually raises your charge and I honestly don't know. I mean, why? Um, I don't know. It, it's one of those things that you just have to um, go by faith on. Um, and when you really think about it, how many people dedicate time to not thinking when your brain is constantly going? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good point. People. Good point. Um, so, you know, basically what I learned from my former teacher and based on my direct experience, essentially yang energy, like, you know, when you do like, you know, qigong and stuff like that, it's more mostly like, like the, essentially the most of the movements and stuff like that, where you move in qi, that's a lot of yang, if I'm not missing, or, or how can I explain this? Right. So my, my understanding of yang and the difference between yin and yang is that, most meditations like like the fact that you're closing your eyes and you're in darkness that's yin and like the yang is essentially the um the heat if you will like that that's that's i mean i'm just really trying to simplify these two energies you know what i mean like do, do you see it that way at all or yeah any kind of movement is yang and mm -hmm. stillness is yin and um yang is always internal of the body you can't um project yang energy you can build it to the surface of your skin and that's how you can burn things or with pyrokinesis but mm -hmm. it can never leave the body yin rides on the back of yang and is the only energy capable of um external influence mm, okay okay interesting um hmm, that's so interesting so um Man, there's a million things I want to ask you. I, don't, I just don't know what to ask you first. Um, like I said, I was usually I have all my questions written down, but this literally came about like in the last, like to, to you know what is it? How I don't even know how long we've been live. Nineteen again? Dang, that's one minute thirty. That's crazy. crazy. But anyways, um, yeah, I, I don't really have questions prepared, but I still have a million questions I want to ask this guy. I just don't know what what order to go in. Um, uh let's see so we touched upon yin and yang energy and stuff like that what, what is like the heaviest object that you've ever been able to move dining room table yeah um i mean surprise me too um because there's certain days that are just it's this is the part that i don't fully understand and perhaps i never will but um 
depending on the day, the time of year, the planetary positions, the room that you're in, the, you know, um, what is it? Feng Shui, you know, um, that is a very deep and detailed subject that people go to school for, for decades and still don't grasp. So when I did that, um, I just felt like I was in a very, it felt like I was moving through water. Like I could literally move my hand and it felt like waves were forming when I would just lift my hand and move it very slightly. And I would notice this produce it like a, a ripple effect across the room. Um, and so any of this stuff, I'm just playing. And it is just through playing that you discover new things. Um, and uh, it was just the right feel, I guess. Um, I just pushed my hands towards the dining room table and it, it was a large dining room table, probably eight feet long and four feet wide and oak. Um, and yeah, it actually slid like a few feet. Um, I have not been able to duplicate that. I could do chairs from time to time. Um, that's crazy. <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> yeah. It just depends on the day and, and uh, how energetic I'm really feeling. This um the current that I've that I've awakened the you know the sparks that I can throw um, that is something that I can activate at will and is something I don't even have to think about. Um, so interesting. it's interesting. Um, so you know we, you know we briefly touched upon like aerokinesis and stuff like that. I've always believed that once I can get to your level where you can move like insanely big objects and stuff like that, that you can pretty much um, do aerokinesis at a high level as well. What is your experience with aerokinesis? Like, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, anybody can do aerokinesis demos when it's extremely windy and stuff like that. I'm just making a confession that most of my really impressive aerokinesis demos are done on a high energy day. Um, you know, right. I've done some stuff on a low energy day as well, but, um, you know, the one, the demos, the aerokinesis demos that I'm impressed by are the ones that are like when it's completely still and you can, you know, um, you know, you know, make it extremely windy and stuff like that. What are like you Michael Grubb. Yeah. His, like Michael Grubb. Yeah. Can, yeah. can you, can you touch upon your, uh, uh, aerokinesis a little bit in your experience with that? Yeah, it's a, oh, dude, I'm having such deja vu right now. I swear that we've had this conversation before. That's a weird feeling. Um, so, uh, actually, my aerokinesis has gotten, um, it's gotten weaker since I really awakened the current. And I love interacting with, with, um, plants especially i mean they respond so well but um it's like since i've been going more towards the current side of things to where i'm trying to increase my spark distance and strength and you know just because i think it's fun um i notice my aerokinesis when i try to revert back to just basic um motions and wind and you know trying to make little mini tornadoes and stuff it's um it's like uh um it's like a frequency that i'm not used to anymore and it's hard to describe and i really don't know what the reason for it is but um you know i still do it every night i still you know every evening oh, you do it every that's cool yeah when i'm passing the trees i always try right to like... right it's hard not to right i mean like once you discover it it's like anytime you're outside you're like you know <laughs> dude when driving especially i'm just like ah <laughs> like yeah, people yeah. Are like looking at me and i'm just like yeah, yeah. i know it's weird yeah like, yeah <laughs> yeah i mean it, it sounds to me like you're I mean, it's hard to measure someone's aerokinesis level because, like I said, I mean, depending on how windy it is outside, it's kind of hard to measure, like, your your level of expertise, if you will, when it comes to airbending and stuff like that. Um, like, but, but you briefly mentioned that you can create mini tornadoes and stuff. Um, so that, that sounds pretty impressive to me because I certainly have never created a mini tornado. So can you, uh, like... 
I think I'm really hard on myself with um, these abilities. I think that um, something that you can't display at command every single time, then you really don't own that ability. So if I can't, if I can't make a mini tornado every single time, then I'll pretty much act like I've never been able to. So um, yeah, I, I'm pretty rough on myself, but yeah, it is, it is, um, I guess I am like, if I'm being less critical, um, yeah, I, I, I am very strict with my control. Like if something moves the opposite direction that I want it to, or I'm forming a circuit with a huge area of trees and mm -hmm. one tree doesn't activate, I'll get, I'll get frustrated and try to force it. <laughs> you know? Right. 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 But I mean, um, everything wants to react, you know, right. Every, every living thing right. has energy. Right. I mean, you, you know, I like to give, always give credit where credit's due. Um, you know, the popular aerokinesis technique, a lot of people use comes from Michael Grapple, where he goes and like, you know, um and stuff. And I, I certainly use that as well. My understanding is that when you do these buzzing sounds, um, you're essentially stimulating your third eye and that um, that's what makes the, you know, the energy, the, the wind, like basically get windier, <laughs> essentially, um, you know, so someone with an extremely open third eye can essentially just, you know, make, make you know, you know, make outside, make your environment extremely windy and stuff. So, um, you know, I, I, I would imagine you're, you know, you're a very humble guy, but I would imagine you're probably extremely good at aerokinesis and stuff and the i would z love to see one of your demos you know? for me the z sounds never worked for me with aerokinesis really that yeah, doesn't work it, for you and it never came through my through my uh third eye either it was always at the base of the neck if i lead energy right at that point um and i just breathe hard through it and build up my energy there or through my feet um that's when i get the major reactions um when I first started, I would just um, squeeze the energy in my ears until they connected, and then I would it would shoot out of my neck and around. Um, Interesting. Yeah, Michael Grubbs techniques did not work for me at all. Really, that's really interesting. Because I mean, I you know to me it seems like it works really well and stuff, but I guess everybody's different. And you certainly come from a you know like I said a Nigong lineage and stuff like that. Um, I mean, we, 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 have we said his name on this live stream already? Can, can we, can we say your master's name? Yeah. Steve Gray. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I'm I, I, sorry. I'm, sure the book. Book. <laughs> I'm so dumb. So like I guess I'm not prepared for, I wasn't prepared for this at all. Okay. So, um, so what is master Steve's take on like, you know, Errol Kinesis and stuff like that? I wouldn't like, cause you know, I, I, I was, I was watching him do like, you know, Tai Chi and stuff like that. And like, you know, he's <laughs> just, you know, the trees behind him are like, you know, moving according to his like movements and stuff like that. Like, you know, ha have you guys discussed anything in regards to Errol Kinesis at all? Oh yeah. I mean, so um, when we went and saw him um, and I first met him standing next to him, you can hear, a buzzing sounds like electricity crackling um and you could feel it like your hair stands on ends like up to three feet away from him and you're like whoa like i've never felt anything like that around anybody before but um i asked him about this stuff because i was playing with the wind um before i met him and uh he's like oh yeah i don't really pay attention to those those kind of games and you know uh but it was so funny when we were going through his his techniques, his his Qigong routine, uh, all the plants were just like swaying in motion with his movements. And I was like, Steve, do you not realize that everything around here is like reacting to you? He's like, oh, yeah, I, I guess it does. But, you know, <laughs> just, he, doesn't, he doesn't care. It seems like uh, it's kind of funny how how little uh, importance he, he places on any of these side effects because he knows the real stuff is the waves of knowledge that just slam into you in moments of silence. Like, wow, I knew That's nothing crazy. about electronics or engineering before yeah. meditation. And yeah. then 
after a deep meditation session, I started building feverishly. Um, yeah. Multiple Tesla coils, X-ray guns, microwave weapons, like all sorts of shit that I knew nothing about. And yeah, yeah. Who knows, man? It's not it's not my yeah. knowledge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess someone like him will look at me and be like, oh, you all you care about is superpowers and stuff. I'm not I mean, I'm not gonna make you my student, probably, you know. But I mean, I still look up to the guy a lot and I think he's phenomenal and stuff. And I wish I can like mature a little more in my I don't even know what to call it, you know, my desires and like intentions and stuff like that. Because I mean, I am pretty open about the fact that, yeah, of course, like I want superpowers. That's why I play with them. And that's why I interview people. And that's why I practice, you know, I can't like, I'd be, I'd be a liar if I said that that wasn't my goal and intention and stuff, you know what I mean? But I do think as I mature, as I get wiser and stuff like that, I mean, that I, I would probably eventually not care about this stuff. And I, I do think that is like really what I'm truly seeking is to not care about these things eventually and stuff like that. And that's probably why I'm not going to be doing these interviews and stuff like that and things like this you know for so long because i feel like i am getting to that point but still you know what i mean like i still want to be able to do some of the things that you're able to do and stuff like that but i do have a feeling that once i do reach that point where i get to your level and stuff it's it's going to be meaningless like yeah i can move stuff so what you know what i mean so you know because i'm not quite there yet because like um like i was sharing with you yesterday i'm not Yes, I can move side wheels and stuff like that sometimes when my energy is charged. But can I do it like right now live? Like heck no, you know. So yeah, you, could. you could. Well, I mean, I, I don't I, I don't I don't want to embarrass myself if I couldn't do it. So dude, it's all it. well, that's why I I mean before Steve gave me permission to start showing people some of the some of the stuff that happens because I told him I was like Steve if if no one knows what humans are capable of then no one's going to care enough to um seek out the path and he's like well he's like you know what that's true if you could show people some of these things um and it guides one person that's serious enough to find the way to enlightenment then it's worth it so Mm -hmm. i mean really when you break it down it doesn't matter how much meditation you do if you knew that you could do these things with no meditation, then you could do them. Mm-hmm. Like, but how many people in their minds look at an object and say, I'm gonna move that without touching it and really believe it? Like, I have mm-hmm. doubt creep into my head all the time. Even when I'm moving something, I'm still like, that's not really happening. And then it will stop immediately. And it, Honestly, it just takes progression of moving larger and larger objects because before you're like, okay, I can do these things. Like, it's not just, you know, a fluke. It, it actually does exist, you know, regardless of what people say. Um, yeah. It's just one of those things. Like, if you were born knowing that you could fly, then you'd be flying. But, you know, of course, we have gravity and you, you know, get a fear of heights very early on. Um, okay. it's just not going to happen for people, um, right. without intense training. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so when it comes to Nikon, especially from like the Mopi system and stuff like that, it seems to me like they're able to not only just do telekinesis stuff, but they can, it seems like a lot of those practice practitioners can also use, um, some of their techniques to uh towards martial arts and stuff like that breaking bricks and like um you know i forgot some of the the stuff that john chain was able to do and stuff but um does master steve have any experience with that kind of stuff as well uh like with breaking bricks or like uh um you know like you know i i i think i i could be wrong about this but i thought i heard that john chain like a bullet couldn't penetrate his skin or something like that um like is there any stories like that that you can possibly share yeah, I mean, Steve uh, had me and my best friend when we weren't out there go at him full speed, trying to attack him. And he's like, if you could land one punch, then you don't have to train the rest of the day. And so obviously I felt uh, some reservation about doing so. But um, when he hit us, I was like, that's it. I'm coming at you, old man. You better watch out. I couldn't come anywhere close to him. It was like, my fist was deflected on its own and it wasn't just a um 
what do you call it? a placebo effect? It was like I was really actually trying to hurt that man <laughs> because wow. he was talking. Are, are you, and, are, sorry, go, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no, that was it. Oh, that was it. Okay. Um, are, do, do you know who Max Reader and Alexander Kukolnik is? No. They do Empty Force. Oh, you, you don't know. Oh, they're my friends, but um, uh, you know, they're the ones that in this community do Empty Force and stuff like that. I I could be wrong about this. I I. If Alex is watching this, I'm sorry. I thought Alex told me once that, uh, you know, um, uh, empty force can't be applied to like, you know, like, you know, MMA competitions or boxing or, or and stuff like that. I, I, I thought he said that. What is your take on that? Do you think martial artists can use these abilities to like actually win in competitions? What, what, do you, what is your take well, on that? So um, our training specifically um, focused on increasing your yang stores to a point to where you could physically feel a like baseball sized object moving throughout your body which is really uh an interesting feeling to say the least um because i can actually see it moving down my sternum like through my skin now which is weird but um mm -hmm. you can use this energy whenever you're fighting because it'll go straight to your fists especially in moments of rage. Um, so when you have this baseball size thing going through your body and you feel your fists get 10 times heavier than they are, you can't hurt. I mean, like you can't attack somebody because you, you will kill them. Like it's a living energy. I mean, it is intelligent. And so if you strike somebody and you're full of chi in your fists, it's going to go straight to their heart. I mean, Steve never sparred with us without wearing thick ass gloves. Um, just because he's like, uh, you know, I don't even want to like pat you on the back uh, with congratulations because of um, what it could possibly do, you know, if he can't control his emotions well. So, yeah, it can, uh, I mean, it's a martial system. His was. How, how, like, I mean, Steve is in his 70s. Am I correct? Yeah, but he's so freaking agile. He's like a 20 year old man. It's really? Insane. Like, like, dude. so, like, like, does he, does he work out still a lot and stuff like that? Or no, but dude, we were going, uh, and I think it was like we were like 9,000 feet up or so in, in his property. And we were going hiking, and dude, I'm not used to that kind of height. Um, but he was going at it like it was just nothing. While me and my buddy, who are not like unfit people, are like gasping for breath. Right, right, because it's because because of that elevation of the mountains and stuff. Yeah. But dude, he's like jumping over rocks and and um, branches and, and and just like. Not even, not even perspirating, not even showing any signs of exasperation, just very calm and collected. I'm just like, wow, yeah, this is crazy. Wow. So, I mean, <laughs> this is an odd question, but I guess everything I'm asking you is odd and everybody thinks we're crazy. <laughs> we're crazy. Um, but, um, you know, Basically, uh, I was watching one of his uh, videos and stuff like that. And he was describing um, his path as a path to become an immortal and stuff like that. What is your take on that? Like, is he going to eventually be an immortal? Are you going to eventually be an immortal? What, what, what is your take on that? Hopefully, man. I mean, the whole point of it is to gather enough energy in this lifetime to where and it doesn't matter what your views on religion really are. You die. And you go somewhere. It, it's just a, it, it's just a, it's something that happens. If you truly believe that nothing happens when you die, then you are not intelligent enough to form a rational thought. Like really, uh, it, it's sorry to say that, but um, I have a hard time believing atheists are truly atheists because look at where the hell we are. The, like explain life, explain our conscious. Um. Anyways, you gather enough energy in this lifetime, you can take your intelligence with you in the afterlife, and you could break the um, rebirth cycle. You don't have to come back down here. You pretty much become a uh, Tao or one with everything. You become God in a sense. Mm -hmm. 
So oh, yeah, I think Steve will become an immortal. I hope that I will, but who knows? I still have a long way to go. Right, right. I wanted to now, you know, I wanted to ask you one more thing. Like all these questions are now starting to like pop up in my head, like, you know, as I'm thinking about Mr. Steve Moore. Um so Mr. So uh it's uh you know a commonly well accepted um concept that uh celibacy is very important when it comes to you know like like the Mopai people supposedly preach that as well and stuff like a lot of that was really preach that. I believe yogis do as well, if I'm not mistaken, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong about that, because I'm not a yoga expert. Well, I'm not really an expert on anything. But anyways, um, what like, you know, I was watching Mr. Steve's video, and he was saying this whole celibacy concept, this idea is complete BS. What is your take on that? Because from my direct experience, it doesn't really matter that much at all and stuff like that. Um, Can you tell me your opinion on that? So it's, um, it's not BS because um, Steve advised us that, you know, even when we went up there that we could only um, have an ejaculation once a week in your early thirties. Um, like, but the longer I've gone without, you really notice a uh, increase in charge, like um, <laughs> electrically speaking. I mean, when you look at it, and you truly know the the uh, three elixir system jing chi shin mm. jing is i mean you're turning your semen into like it that is the life creating liquid in your body it's like the god atoms you're turning that into actual usable energy throughout your body um yeah, so no it's not bullshit but in a scientific perspective like your body replaces your sperm cells full fully once every 48 hours so it's really not that important but something about it is because i could tell tell you from experience and this is kind of weird to even say publicly but i haven't in over a year now like uh you know if i've been with somebody it's been it's been just tantric to where um i never fully you know o face um you know i don't know but it it definitely increased my charge and at this point it's more of a contest for me interesting okay so that wasn't necessarily the answer that i was expecting because i mean i I even asked master steve about this in one of the youtube comments and his 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 reply was like yeah it's bs all these dallas no don't know what they're talking about they made that up because they're all you know he describes all these mopi people as wimps or something you know what i mean so (laughs) so (laughs) So, i mean and it may be because he's um he hasn't needed to to focus on this aspect of training in in decades so um he may have just um, brushed it off as not important because he doesn't have to do it anymore you know um mm, interesting. Where, whereas someone just starting out yeah it's of major importance because that's where you're going to get all of your yang energy that you use to pull in more yin energy interesting okay okay well that's definitely something important to keep in mind as a practitioner for sure what else um so let's see let's talk about a scene without eyes a little bit so you know you're obviously a very phenomenal telekinesis practitioner um you know and you you know we, we've seen a lot of phenomenal you know electrokinesis and like you know um you know like the uh, the, the piece of foil was like and actually like you know pulling towards your hand and stuff like that it's really impressive um in regards to seeing without eyes, by doing these, um, you know, Tian Shan, Nekong, Qigong practices, did it improve your remote viewing seeing without eyes and stuff like that? Or is this something uh, new that you stumbled upon when you discovered Wendy and Rob's Facebook group? Oh, yeah. I mean, it came from that um, that documentary, Superhumans. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure you've seen it to where yeah. there's for, you know, playing catch and stuff and reading books. And I was like, no way. But... That's when I reached out to Wendy and Rob, and it wasn't until months after I had met them that I realized I'm an idiot. I have, like, all this energy in me that I could be using for blindsight, and as soon as I realized that, it was, like, instant. Um, I mean, 
those those people at Vibervision, the ones that charge eight thousand freaking dollars for a week training course, which is criminal, I think. Their their um training uh parent company is from Australia, and Rob got to see every one of their videos, and it literally is basic chi kung training. That's it, and I'm like, wow. dude. I mean, how how simple? Like, yeah, this energy lets you, you know, remote view very easily. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's part of the reason why I, I kind of got turned off. I mean, I've 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 never wanted to personally monetize or become a teacher. I just like I'm just super passionate about this energy stuff, and I just wanted to document my journey. That's always been kind of like my goal and stuff. But you know, I, I definitely don't want to. I mean, there's a, I'm not against teachers. I there's a, a lot of fantastic teachers that I'm aware of and stuff like that. But I mean, I, I don't think I'll ever be in a position where I'll, I'll be endorsing someone's course anymore because it's really really simple you know what i mean like it's so simple and like well it's not simple but it's 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 not you don't need to pay like you said eight thousand dollars a week or something like that to learn this stuff you know what i mean like it's just it's a lot a lot easier than that so you know so, right yeah um chris so one more question in regards to well i guess this is a neat question because it's about electrokinesis you shared a video with me yesterday on messenger there was like lightning bolts coming out. And I guess that's, I don't even know what to call it, but yeah. it looked like it, it essentially your chi, your energy is like as strong as like someone like touching a Van der Graaff machine, basically. Cause that's kind of what it looked like. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, I've heard of concepts that essentially if you can touch like these electrostatic machines, whatever you want to call them and stuff like that. Um, it's like a shortcut, if you will, um I, there's a machine called like gosh i can't remember the name of it now but but there's like these electrostatic machines and stuff like that that you can um bas basically uh touch or sit on and like it g gives you like electrons and stuff like that in your mm -hmm. body and um that can massively amplify your chi if you will H have you ever heard these concepts at all before oh yeah absolutely um and in fact, that's really all that this energy is at a very scientific level is negative ions in your body. And you're increasing the negative ions to a level to where you can concentrate them through emission points. And that's literally all it is. And, um, you know, this electricity just happens to be intelligent. So people can use it as healing or telekinesis or whatever your will is. Let's, I, I'm glad you mentioned healing. Um, have you been sick or like, you know, have you healed somebody else? Like, do you have any experiences, any cool stories in regards to healing? Um, I'm trying to get good at the healing arts right now because I had a, and this is going to sound lunatic, but you know, we're on a roll. So I'm on as well. So um, I was on my run about a month ago and I had a vision sent to me that I was supposed to lay hands on my neighbor who has uh, uh, I'm sorry, stage four cancer um, and immediately started arguing. And I call it the Holy Spirit because it just feels like that's who it is that's giving me these messages. But um, I, I've healed people before of, you know, minor injuries bone spurs to where they showed up on the x-ray the next time they went um gone completely um but cancer is in a category of its own i mean how amazing would that be and that's kind of my like that is a major goal if i can manage to get to where i can remove somebody of a fatal disease that is just it's devastating like what it does to people and nobody should have to watch their family members die like that. Um, that's what I really hope to be, uh, be getting good at. And I'm supposed to um, meet with this guy in a month and do this laying of hands thing on, um, which I'd never even heard of, but uh, he came to me like a minute later, drove up to me randomly. Uh, when I was on my run, I told him what I had seen. And he's like, you know what? He's like, I think 
that is your calling and I'm all for it. And so I'm not expecting a miracle, but I probably need to get my mind right that, yeah, I can it with, you know, with God's help. Um, who knows? Interesting. It's, it's so interesting that you mentioned the Holy spirit. I'm not a Christian, you know? Um, but my, my teacher's teacher, he's a very well, you know, we, I don't want to mention his name, but we, we talked about him and her, um, offline while we were talking or not offline, but, but while we were privately speaking, we mentioned them and stuff like that. They are Christians and they talk about the Holy spirit a lot. My grandmasters, if you will, um, like you know another word for it is the seeking of truth and knowledge and that spirit of of a um, constant yearning to know the truth that is what is considered the holy spirit and it's just easier to say than the pursuit of actual knowledge i mean it is a living thing that comes inside of every single genius that you'll ever hear about that they receive flash inspiration you know like how uh, Tesla could see all of his inventions right before his eyes, like a hologram, before even building anything. Um, same thing with Einstein. Says, you know, if you look deep enough into anything, you'll find um, you'll find the knowledge of God. And it's like um, it doesn't really matter what your religion is. It's but I do know that the pursuit of knowledge and that passion to know the truth of things—that's something higher. Like. That's something that is tangible because you can see when people are filled with it. Awesome. So that's what I'm referring to. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Because basically the way they described Christianity was essentially that the Holy Spirit is real and stuff. And coming from these Dallas practices, like, why are you going back to Christianity and stuff? It, it kind of. They are so related. Me. They are so related in every way. Like. I have such a passion for researching religion. I've read nearly every religious text out there. Um, the Quran, the Torah, the Vedic text, ancient Egyptian, everything that was written about that. Um, the Bible, Book of Mormon, um, the Torah. So um, all of them have very basic and alike principles. Um, and when you look at the Tao, you realize that all of them are saying the same thing just don't be a piece of shit and and that there is something higher guiding all this i mean how how hard would it be to imagine that we're existing on a on a spinning rock shooting through the void at 60,000 miles per hour and we can question our own existence and say that it means nothing like that would be mind blowing right right um let's talk a little bit about levitation you mentioned that you were able to you know uh well, well i forgot what the actual measurement was but you were able to lift off a little bit essentially could you pounds. describe your levitation experience a little bit yeah so from somebody that can do the levitation um told me that you pretty much have to form a toroid of energy around your body so you have to utilize the upper channel and the lower channel and get them flowing down and up and outwards um, until you can, I guess you'd feel it spinning really fast. Um, I just, I guess I don't feel it enough, but I, I can lift, you know, 10 pounds off the scale while I'm standing on it. Uh, you know, so 180 pounds more to go. <laughs> and all of it interesting what are other phenomena that you have um like you know we we were talking about synchronicities a lot yesterday when we were chatting and stuff like that like is there any like psychic phenomena if you will that you can describe like maybe like you know manifesting something cool because to me I mean, the fact that I'm talking to you right now after I decided I'm not going to do these interviews and stuff like that ever again is right. like pretty amazing because the only reason why is like I said, because of this man, like, well, not what well, this isn't the only reason, but like, because I just initially just wanted to have a talk, you know, just wanted to talk to you because I think you're phenomenal. But what, what compelled me to do it is because I know how powerful this book is and who this 
I know how powerful this man is. And um, I forgot where I was going with this, but, um, you know, is there any, um, like, I, I was just trying to say that, you know, this is like, the fact that I'm talking to you is kind of like a man of, like a manifestation because I wanted to get to know Mr. Steve. I wanted to seek out his knowledge and stuff like that. And then, you know, I stumbled upon you, you know, you know, synchronistically, you know, <laughs> and stuff. And I have no doubt this is something that I, that, that I was able to manifest and stuff like that. Pretty much everybody, everybody that I've interviewed in my life, um, you know, and like some of these like high level people that I got the encounter was all like a manifestation. I, I want to talk to a person like Alexander Kokolnik is like a perfect example. Um, you know, I like old, was always a big fan of him and stuff. And I wanted to like seek out his knowledge and stuff. And like, boom, right. you know, now we're talking, you know, pretty regularly and stuff, you know. Um, and so, so, so <laughs> with that, that being said, like, um, is there any um, like a, other psychic phenomena, if you will, that you can uh, describe. Oh yeah, man, they happen every single day, and I'm really not even surprised by them anymore. I mean, um, since I started actually sharing and not being so selfish and to myself about it, um, I've met some incredible people that are equally as gifted, and we even formed, you know, me. Panagiotis and um, Normans, who are part of all these groups that we're part of, um, formed a little chat group to where um, we post videos uh, when we can throughout the day of us like um, lifting heavier and heavier objects and kind of pushing and challenging each other. And um, it's awesome. so weird. It's gotten to the point to where we'll know exactly what the other person is going to say way before they say it. And um, cool, man. I mean, it just comes with, uh, like, if you're on the path of seeking the truth, then you'll find it and it'll come in such abundance that language uh, and the limitation of are not going to be a, um, a restriction anymore. Like, right. you'll be filled with the knowledge and you'll be connected with people and things will happen to where you're, like, you're just instantly paired with the person that you're supposed to be um, before you even know you're supposed to be paired with them. And um, to where it's kind of mind blowing, like, Oh, I want to learn uh, levitation. Well, Oh, you're somebody that can levitate. Holy crap. Like, right. That's so cool, man. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, man, that's so amazing that you that you're saying that. Yeah. I mean, yeah like every it, it almost seems like every time i feel like i get to the point where i say there's not there's pr i pretty much learned it all i seeked out every single teacher i read every book i bought every course there's nothing more to learn there's like always some somebody that pops up in my life like someone like you you're the perfect example you know and yeah man it's just like life is so incredible it's just it's an endless there's just endless you know cool stuff that happens every single time you know that you know you think that you there's just you know nothing more to learn and stuff it's just it's just amazing yeah Dude, I mean, I, I um, joke with um, with my friends all the time about this. It's like um, I constantly am feeling every day like I don't know shit about anything because like the more you discover, the more you know how uh, how complex everything really is. And I don't know. It's like the deeper you go, the less you actually know. And so um, – it's just kind of humorous after a while because you start um, making connections that you never did before and new abilities open up and you just kind of have to laugh at it. Like this is like unbelievable to the point to where you can't even really share it with anybody. Like, I know, I know. isn't that the weirdest thing about all this? It's I, like, I know, I know it's ugh, man. Like I, I, like when I at work and stuff, I have to pray that like my coworkers don't look up my name and stuff, you know? And like, <laughs> I have friends on this. I mean, this is my spiritual Facebook account, but I, I'm like praying like some of my, well, I mean, I'm sure there's a few of my personal friends that are probably watching this going, dude, Kim became so crazy, you know, he's out of his mind now and stuff. And it's all good. It is what it is. Like, you know, I used to be really insecure about a lot of this stuff, but I'm starting to not 
care anymore, you know, and it stuff. Helps. And same thing with the it same thing with the trolls. I mean, obviously, it's inevitable to get trolls when we're like, you know, sharing this stuff in Facebook groups and stuff like that. There's always that one guy that's like, "Oh, this is fake. Oh, you're just waving your hand. Oh, it's just win. Oh, it's just whatever." You know what I mean? So, right. You know, but it's just like I, I I used to be extremely sensitive about it to where I was like. I would like, like, you know, eat, like I was the type of person, if 10 guys are giving me compliment, compliment, compliments, but if one guy is saying like, oh, you're fake, you're a charlatan, whatever, blah, 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 I'll take it so personal and I'll quit for weeks, sometimes months, you know, I was that kind of guy, but I'm starting to kind of overcome that insecurity. Dude, that's why I quit seven years ago is because um, um, people were so negative about um, the doubt. And I was like, you know, I don't give a shit if people are learn this stuff or not, because if they're going to doubt even a very, very simple fact in life, then they're never going to be someone that's going to explore any of this stuff any further. And I'm like, you know what? I don't want you to like, this isn't for you. So, you know, God bless them. Yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, some of these trolls, it's like, well, if you're like, why are you even in our group? Like, I just don't understand if you don't want to learn this stuff. You know what I mean? I just don't get it. <laughs> but yeah, um, man, um, l- let's talk a little more about telekinesis. So um, from my experience, the more I do telekinesis, the more it feels like it's draining my energy and stuff like that. It's like to develop telekinesis, you do these things like the Tian Shan Ne Kung or like the, uh, the, the Falun Dafa or right here. <laughs> so, yeah, or that. like, you know what I mean? You do those types of, you know, exercises, you know, some people do yoga, which is great. I, I don't know anybody that did yoga to you know unlock psychic powers it within these groups to my knowledge but um but they do these things and stuff like that that's how they unlock these abilities and stuff like that but there was there's a few people that i personally interviewed you know what i mean i've interviewed over 40 experts um in this niche some people have told me that the more they do tk the stronger their abilities get and stuff like stuff like that because perhaps there's something it has to do something with belief maybe what is your take on that from your I think it's like I think it's like working out a, a muscle like it's like going to the gym if you use it you you will get stronger and honestly it's just reinforcing your beliefs um, that makes you stronger interesting okay okay I, I want to share my personal telekinesis uh, journey a little bit. When I first started, you know, um, I didn't really know what I was doing. I started with a dive wheel and stuff like that. I went, you know, once I was able to move one side, I decided to try to spin two side wheels. And then I got to the point where I could spin like 50 of them and stuff like that, you know. But when I try to move something heavy, like I try to knock over like a you know piece of paper with my mind and stuff like that, it just didn't work. And I was thinking to myself, but I can move 50 side wheels now. Why can't I move a little piece of paper and stuff? You know what I mean? But once I was able to knock over a piece of paper, which she, whatever you want to call it. um, And I spent a lot of time with that and I try to go back to moving multiple side (laughs) wheels. I couldn't do that anymore. And I thought to myself, there's definitely some level of belief in this telekinesis um, abilities and stuff. It's not just all about meditating and doing Qigong and, you know, she exercise and stuff like that is, is that your understanding as well from your experience absolutely man it is frustrating too because uh some days you know um like since we started our little uh superstar chat group and we're challenging each other i was like okay um i've never been able to move uh, a full like can of soda across the table so i was like mm-hmm. with it standing up and i said i will so I did a protein shake just to one up my friends. <laughs> and uh, but then I tried to do um, like a a simple ping pong ball and I couldn't freaking move it at all. And I'm like, gosh dang it, like I don't understand. And it we joke about that all the time too, because we still, even though um, our collective experience has been over 30 years in this little group that we have going on, um, we still don't understand like why um that you know 
why do our beliefs affect it so much? Why, why when we do something one day, can we not do it the next day? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Right, right. It's really interesting. Um, some people, like, you know, we touched upon my grandmasters, if you want to call it that, if you are these two individuals, the lady and the guy, um, they are very adamant about the side effects that can occur in the body when it comes to like, you know, cultivating too much yang energy and stuff like that. Um, they are pretty much completely against it almost. They only believe in like cultivating yin energy and stuff like that. I certainly can kind of relate to that a little bit because like I mentioned, you know, when I do too much telekinesis and stuff like that, I feel like it kind of causes like all these weird side effects in my body and stuff like that. Um, I believe Falun Dafa, they describe it as like Qigong insanity or something like that in their practice or in their uh, John Falun book. Um, do you have any experience with like with the overloading too much energy in the body and stuff like that? And like how you have to kind of ground the energy down, if you will? So I've never um, experienced any negative side effects with um, keeping too much energy in my body other than um, it's exhausting it, it, to, to a point to where, you know, like I charged up before a video and it hurts to hold it for longer than an hour. And it's it's just started making me uncomfortable. And um, but um, other than that, it's. I've never placed much emphasis on that. Everybody talks about like um, chi sickness. And um, honestly, I think that this energy really knows what to do anyways. So if you, can, if you could just get out of your own way and let it do its thing, then you'll be fine. Interesting. Okay. Okay. That's something definitely to keep in mind. I, I had to quit a lot of like, telekinesis exer you know exercises primarily you know when i was doing scene without eye stuff too a little bit i i'm not a, i never really got anywhere with that um honestly but i i definitely felt some level of side effects for my head would you know start hurting really bad and stuff like that sometimes i feel like i'm gonna get a heart attack and stuff but i mean that could be related to my diet issues as well because i mean for a while i mean i work at a pizza store now and stuff and i eat a lot of pizza now and stuff which is good for me so i mean that that you know that has that could perhaps some has something to do with you know <laughs> with, with some of these symptoms and stuff but well i i, I also know that um when you start increasing your energy that you'll notice when your um, body deems something negative or, or positive and it will affect you like I freaking love the shit out of pork and I can't eat it because mm -hmm. it makes me hurt so freaking bad. Like it gives right. me a heart turn to hell. I'm um, so sorry to cut you off. I, I just got to charge my phone real quick. Like, yeah, my yeah, phone's about no to die. My phone's about to die. Okay, I gotta hold my phone now. Okay, which is fine. Okay, there we go. Now we're good. So, sorry, what, what were you trying to say? Oh, um, I, I, that um, this energy will let you know whether it thinks something's positive or negative, and affects your body thus, thusly. Like, um, you'll start realizing that you, you cannot tolerate certain foods or beverages or, um, different practices that, you know, different vices, you just won't be able to handle it anymore. And, um, it'll make you feel sick. And I think that is just like this energy's way of doing what is best for you physically. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Um, Chris. You mentioned that um, uh, you work out three hours a day and stuff like that. Um, you seem like a really fit guy to me as well. Um, like, what type of workouts do you do? And like, does you know? I, I correct me if I'm wrong about this. I believe Mr. Steve was saying that if you want cheap power, you have to like have a lot of um, strength muscles, if you will. Am, am I right about this? If, if I'm totally wrong about that, I. Well, um, dude, um, I, I think it works inversely. Like, I think the more 
energy you have internally and the more you've built up over time, the easier everything becomes. Like I run six miles every night and I do a full like um, hour, 10 minute weightlifting session um, seven days a week. Like I haven't missed a day in 97 days now. Um, but it makes it so much easier. Like um, before, if you told me, you know, like um, uh, last year, if you told me um, that I would be running, you know, or training for a marathon, I would have laughed. But then I realized just through meditation that it just kind of came to me. Why don't I use this for physical performance? And yeah, it really makes everything so much easier. Mm -hmm. Chris, I, I, I hate to ask your age, but how, how old are you? 35. 35. Okay. Um, Happy birthday, you know, by the way, man. Oh, thank you. I'm, uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, it is my birthday today. Awesome. Um, so, oh, by the way, thank you to those of you that wish me happy birthday today. Um, I just wanted to say that since I'm live. Um, well, I was trying to ask you something in regards to workouts. Um, uh, so, so, so essentially working out is like building up a, building up the yang energy. Do, do you see that, see it that way at all? Or No, I don't. I, I think the two are like, um, my physical training is is way separate from my meditational training. Like, um, I really just, and I think the energy honestly has made me become such a fanatic with working out because I want to keep, I want to be in peak physical condition, and, and I think it's just a healthier temple for the energy to exist in. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, meditation is uh, or internal work is so different from physical training. Um, maybe maybe i'm kidding myself <laughs> like like i said i just don't know anymore um it seems to like honestly i've been listening to this guiding do you mind if we call it the holy spirit just for time's sake because, oh sure yes absolutely okay. call it so I this guy this holy spirit is i've been listening to everything it's been telling me to do for the past eight years and it's never you know led me wrong um it knows what it needs it to exist and fully um i i guess uh make you a physically superior specimen i guess um i don't know how to describe it really man interesting okay okay um let's talk about electrokinesis for a second um so i've never really had success with like electrokinesis a whole lot like turning off light bulbs and turning on turning them on and stuff like that um i've only really had like true success with psi wheels um and some rolling cups and stuff like that too when my energy was right um but i could never roll cups inside like the glass container which i want to be able to do but anyways um when when did you discover that you can do electrokinesis and stuff like that because i personally know people that can do electrokinesis but they have a hard time um moving objects um under like you know a glass container and stuff like that um do, do you think it has to do with belief or is there like an energy development thing going on there what what is your take on that well i wrote down um i don't know it's like five pages of information that um i do internally while performing these side effects like I'll describe exactly what is going on, what I'm doing physically to um, to create these effects, like shutting off lights or lighting up bulbs or whatever. Um, and the five people that I've sent it to have honestly, they've started displaying these abilities like shortly after. So I really think it's just purely something that you can like you could will it internally. Like I teach about how you with um, electrokinesis that you have to guide it up to the back of your skull um, and right in between third eye, your back of your skull and in between the ears, it forms a cross. If you can hit that cross with your will, like in the pineal gland pretty much. And when you breathe out, you force it to the back of your skull and right to the top of your head right there. And um, once you get it there and you start to your inhale, whatever you're looking at, it will make, you know, electric, electronic sort out or um, fizzle in 
why i don't freaking know <laughs> but <laughs> but i just know that's what's worked for me and i could describe it and other people have had great luck with it so i mean maybe it is the same for everybody it's just like who's going to take the time to learn like what's really happening inside of you interesting okay okay um correct me if i'm wrong you know john chang is based famous for you know doing the uh, uh the pyrokinesis i'm um, you know master mr steve um basically called him out and said that was fake you in turn said that no uh mr steve was just fed up with all these mopi practitioners and stuff like that mm -hmm. um that demo was absolutely real Were, correct me if i'm wrong you said that you were able to do that as well mm -hmm. yeah it ex it um it's one of the things i don't um enjoy showing because it freaking exhausts me. I mean, it is like, seriously, um, like I just ran a marathon and I just want to go to sleep and I don't like that feeling. <laughs> like if I do that, it's the last thing I do for the day. Um, but yeah, it, it's just, um, it's really easy to teach. Um, but it is quite exhausting because you literally feel like you're in a sauna um, and it could be cold as hell in the room. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, you pretty much increase your yang energy and bring it to the surface of your palms. But with that much energy in you, you seriously feel like you're sitting in an oven. And so you're just, your face is all red and you're sweating. And it's just, it's wow. not pretty. <laughs> but. Interesting, interesting. Have you, do you have any experience with like, you know, breaking bricks or anything like that? Or No uh steve does the one inch punch which is really crazy um can, can you describe that a little because i've seen him do it but i mean i didn't really know what was going on could, could you describe that a little bit yeah you just load your fist up with as much energy as you could possibly will into it to where i mean if you look at your left hands and think of your right hands that's literally the feeling of energy going to your right hands um and if you really just focus all of your focus into your right hands it'll start feeling like heavy like you're holding like a bowling ball it'll start drooping down you're like oh my gosh like what is happening if you don't break that concentration and you lead all of your thought energy your will into this you can use this energy it like hardens your fist and makes it 10 times stronger than it actually is and um yeah you can compact energy into a single movement and that's called fa jin or the release of energy in one strike and you said that if like you know like for example like a ufc fighter or like a you know boxer were to you know obtain this level of energy and stuff they can literally kill the other person yeah, it goes straight to the heart, man. Um, I mean, wow. I mean, if you have, I mean, you could gain um, energy, but it's almost like you're, it's almost like you're growing a baby or something inside of you. I know that's not super freaking weird, but um, in the beginning stages, it doesn't have thought or intelligence, but later on, it really knows what to do. It guides your decisions and everything, and it behaves um intelligently beyond your will so if you're upset and you're in a street fight and you're you've attained a level to where your energy is acting for you um when you punch somebody and exchange this energy it's going to go to where it causes the most damage and stop their heart so people have to be careful i mean it's meant for i mean the the monks used it as as a martial training not that it just has to be martial you can use it for literally everything um but it is very effective interesting okay okay um uh chris so what, what was i trying to ask i forgot um there's it's something regard in regards to fajin and martial arts and stuff um I can't remember now. Like I said, sorry guys. Just like this interview came, you know, about last minute and stuff. I usually write down questions that I want to ask and stuff like that, but I have nothing prepared today because I wasn't planning on doing this. Oh, there is one question I do want to ask you. Um, so in the lineage of dragons, he described, um, or Master Steve described um, 
astral experiences with dragons and stuff like that. Do you have that experience at all? Can you also elaborate on that? Uh, I met it, Steve's um, dragon. Really? I can, met can Steve's you, dragon when I was story? there. Yeah, man, it was terrifying. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. Um, hold, hold on, hold on. This is sorry to cut you off. When you say you met Steve's dragon, like you mean in the astral realm or actually here? It certainly felt like it was right in front of me but it was um it was astrally but it freaking shook me to the core like i was never so terrified in my freaking life like i was asleep in his dojo and i don't remember what time it was but i was like awake and this thing just i looked up at the ceiling and everything was stars like i was looking through the roof and this thing like comes and pulls me through the roof and i go and it's talking to me but it's the size of a galaxy and he's like um i am with steve i am of stars and everything was shaking and i was like ah <laughs> wow what 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 is what is that dragon like is it a god is it a guardian angel like what what is it it's it's steve's guide I don't know, man. Um, I've met some weird shit. I mean, my friend committed suicide in 2015, and uh -huh. that's when that ability opened up in me to, you know, talk to the spirit realm or whatever. But um, mm -hmm. I wish I hadn't had that because uh, it's annoying and, um, you know, it's really bothersome, especially if you're somewhere public and, you know, you're being prodded by a spirit saying, I need to talk to them. I need to talk to them. It's annoying, um, but wow. but I got to meet Steve's dragon. It shook me. He, you know, get, it gave me its name, and then I told Steve the next morning, and I said that was terrifying. He's like, I cannot believe that you know, you saw, you saw him, and uh, yeah, it was pretty surreal. I mean, wow. a lot of demons will try to mimic um, spirits, so you got to be careful. I mean, because you know. Who knows what's really coming through and i certainly didn't know but you know when my cabinets are all open that freaking next morning or i hear my door like a huge bang at 3 a.m it's kind of like uh on uneasy feeling so interesting um talking about steve you said you mentioned that steve was able to teleport I, so like can steve say like can can he teleport from you from wherever he is in South America to your room? Like, I mean, can you explain that a little bit? He said um, like fifty feet. So, oh, oh, so he can only it can only be within a certain range. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and um, he will never tell you about it, and he won't like tell anybody about it. I mean, I was lucky to um, get to copy down his like book that gets passed down. Um, he won't tell you about that either, but it's just training methods and they're very vague and he had to translate because of course it's an ancient Chinese writing and, you know, um, it's very basic. I mean, there's nothing really special. And a lot of these people, they, for some reason, the ancients just, you know, how, when you read, um, books from, like the 1910s or 1900 late 1800s there's a certain level of um assumed knowledge that the author um implied like yeah we already know that you know what we're talking about so we're not going to go into detail as like today's authors do and it's um it, when you're looking at something from you know 1500 years ago um it's like that times a thousand because it's like, um, okay, so I'm supposed to just do, I'm supposed to meditate in silence and not think. And, but the implications behind that is so immense that if we have no grasp on what they actually knew. So, um, yeah, it's kind of crazy, but the knowledge does come on its own. Interesting. Interesting. Um, what was I trying to ask? Oh, yes, yes, yes. So this book, um, 
you know, is, I don't know if you guys can see it or not or read it or not, but it talks about Bruce Lee. And essentially he reveals that Bruce Lee was a Nigong that adept, adept and stuff. And he got assassinated within, in this inside this book. Can you can you reveal that a little bit and elaborate on elaborate on that? So was Bruce Lee, in fact, an energy practitioner like, you know, like you? And also was he assassinated by these Chinese mafias or well, yeah, I mean, um, his uncle led the um, led that um, the the assassination clan that they posed as a as an acrobatics show. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, no, Steve told me about um, Master Fuchs level, and you know how he had people attacking him with spears, you know, twenty people at a time, and they wouldn't touch him. And I'm like, okay, that's pretty nuts, but. Bruce was into um, the martial arts aspect of it, and Fook was his main master, and Steve actually got to train with Bruce for many years and Fook. And, um, but Bruce left because um, – and didn't focus on the internal aspects of martial arts because, I mean, he was so great at the external, and, you know, then money started, you know, showing up. Dollar signs is like, okay, well, I can make money. So – um, he never continued into the internal aspect of Nikon. Interesting. So essentially, Bruce Lee wasn't able to do like some of the stuff that you're able to do or Steve is able to do. No, he trained more like um, Shaolin monks did. And, um, Interesting. and Fook, Fook trained Steve just like that too. But uh, with that external Kung training comes the internal that you have to just spend the time with like you think i want to spend an hour every night sitting in silence like it's boring and it takes a while to get into that state of not thinking like mm. i use different tricks like listening as hard as i can to where sounds mm -hmm. coming from and i hear a high-pitched ring and before i know it an hour has flown by and it feels like two minutes um okay. but yeah it is hard not to think Really right. Hard. right. Um. So, in the, in your opinion, can someone develop both? Can they become a badass Shaolin monk, and also can they develop um, these type kinds of uh, uh, in, internal, like you know, superpowers, if you will? Can can someone obtain both? In your yeah. opinion? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, it. Ha you have to do both, or else you're going to limit yourself. And how fast you'll grow, what levels you'll get to. I mean, Interesting. Okay. once you're past a certain point, if um, you're not physically fit, then you won't be able to handle the training that needs to come with it. Like, mm. like um, at the beginning, I had to do body tapping, which is pretty much you take steel bars and you whack yourself in the abdomen with it over and over and over and i did that for months and interesting i can't feel like my stomach at all anymore like if someone were to punch me in the stomach i would like i would know you know but it really wow at all like it would take somebody with immense strength to really do anything um you know with the body tapping it's kind of like hardening your fist by striking wood over and over i mean you get pores in your bones that start to fill in and then it becomes like steel i mean same thing with any part of your body if it gets hit enough it's going to harden um but yeah it's uh it's just one of those things it just takes uh a willingness to do that is so fascinating. Wow. Interesting. So essentially that, you know, what the, like the Shaolin called the hard body training, if you will, there's definitely a correlation between that and like the, the psychic part of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, okay. I mean, you could just use Qi Kung and, um, and still develop these abilities. I mean, none of it is wrong. All of it is right, but it's just the level of commitment. Like, how much time are you willing to dedicate to it? And if you just did, like, Steve's basic Qigong movements every day, you would you would gain power. Um, you know, you get 80% of what you would from internally uh, meditating from the external stuff. You know, it makes it easier for the people that 
just can't stop thinking, which is a lot of people. So, mm -hmm. um, so Mr. Steve's system, you mentioned that you're at level barely, uh, past level two or something like that. Um, Mopi supposedly has 72 levels and stuff like that. Is there... Like, it's the same. It's so, the same level of, of measurement. I mean, um, Steve talks about four, but it goes to 72. Um, but really? Wow. The fact that anybody gets past three in their lifetime is like slim to none. Like one in a hundred thousand really? wow. get there and... You know, I'll be lucky to get to, you know, my shot at four, but. Really? Wow. Yeah. But I mean, once you get past there, that's when you actually merge the two energies in your body. And the, uh, yeah. yeah, then you become godlike, you know, that's yeah. when you can do molecular control. Um, You know, I hope that would be amazing. John Chang, I, I could be wrong about this. I, you know, I, I believe Costa de Nals said that john chang was 40 I, I can't remember john chang I, 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 I don't want to spread misinformation i, I don't know but I, I know he was up there um but level 72 is essentially where you're immortal and you're god essentially mm -hmm. am i correct mm -hmm. yeah i mean um and then every level beyond three become double the strength of a regular man and then double you know, every level doubles until 72, which is like something like 800 billion or something, some some stupid number. But right, right. Um, I, I could be wrong about this. Once again, um, you know, when I read this, it's somewhere in this book, I believe uh, they say that Kriya Yoga essentially and uh, uh, the Tian Shan Ne Kung are similar and stuff like that so you know essentially all these different energy modalities ancient energy modalities throughout the world are they basically the same thing yep it, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's a good yeah. answer i mean like i said if you meditate there is no wrong meditation there is no right meditation it, it's literally just spending the time to do it and dude so few people come up with so much in their minds like am i doing this right am i doing it wrong and that stops them that stops like 99 percent of people and they don't realize that if you just shut up and do it and or at least try to to get as close as you can to non-thinking that you're actually growing in strength but you won't feel it for a while like it just takes i mean it's a year and a half before i felt anything like you know how disappointing but i would make sure okay. an hour a night like no matter what no matter if i was sick or i just was tired like i didn't want to i did it anyways and then and then one day i just i just knew i could move things and then i you know i um and then i could feel this thing in my stomach like vibrate and i'm like what the like what is that interesting so you say that you're a level two right now i, I gotta be like a level 0 0.1 or something if i have to guess um but uh how long have you been meditating not even, how long have i been i mean that's hard to say man because i mean i've been meditating since 2015 but since 2019 is when i actually started to look you know to practice tk and stuff like that so you're probably I mean, two two me mm -hmm. two yeah. really Mm -hmm. I mean, dude, these external things, the difference between us is is nothing. Like, um, you could do any of the stuff that I can do. You just haven't um, felt comfortable um, knowing that you can yet. That's it. Mm, interesting. Well, that's such a compliment coming from some of your caliber to say that I'm level two. Because, I mean, I, I look at you in amazement all the time, you know, so... <laughs> So, so thank you for that um man that is so interesting wow so essentially they're all the same thing and they're pretty much all 72 are, are you familiar with kunlun nigong at all i mean i asked mr steve about it once in the youtube comments and he was calling max christensen mad max or something he didn't seem like he was a big fan of him are you aware of him at all or mm -mm. 
Oh, never mind. Yeah, I, I, I believe that he said the same thing. Essentially, his system is supposedly ancient, and uh, um, uh, and and that you know they're similar to Korea as well. They they call it the water path, which I'm assuming is like a yin, more of a yin path. Mm-hmm. That sounds more yin. I mean, yin uh, is called water all the time. So, <clears throat> interesting. Yeah, yeah. So interesting, man. Um, I know. Gosh, like we're probably gonna wrap this up soon. Um, you know, I I can probably ask a million more questions, but let me see. Um, well, I always like to wrap up my questions with, "What is your final goal? What do you want to ultimately achieve? What What is it that you want to ultimately achieve, Chris, in your life?" Mm-hmm. I want to um, be able to heal the terminally ill. I want to be able to do the things that Jesus was able to do. And, uh, I, you know, and not stop there. I want to know what we're truly capable of because, you know, you, you said you're not a Christian, but I literally think that in the Bible, Jesus was teaching people that we are gods. We can be exactly like he did, even in the Sermon on the Mount. Um, he said, you could do these things and so much more. And, you know, ye of little faith, if uh, if you had faith the size of a grain of a mustard seed, you could command the mountains into the sea and it would obey. And, and it's like, uh, people just don't really take those things literally. But, I mean, the apostles were doing things that were like, they were raising the dead and you know it was like we just are not this world isn't set up to explore our limitations like what we're truly capable of we're so busy from the moment you wake up you have shit to do like i work 70 hours a week and i work out three hours a day and yet it's like uh i still try to find time to meditate in an hour before bed and uh you know if I didn't make myself, I wouldn't do it because I I would love to get the extra sleep. <laughs> right, right. So, Killen, I said this that was going to be the last question, but I want to ask you in regards to sleep. Do you sacrifice sleep over energy practices like meditation, stuff like that? Do you think that um, it's 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 just as important? Or, that, or, or, or I mean, or, I, not just as important, but do you think that it's um you know doing these energy exercises over sleep because some some people say that you know getting a lot of sleep as energy practitioner is very important and stuff like that so you can recover and stuff what is your take on sleep do you think sleep is an essential part of um energy practice or do you, do you think that as long as you're doing energy practices you don't even have to sleep what, what is your oh take? dude sleep is sleep is super important like the people that tell me that they sleep like less than four hours a night, I just like shake my head in disbelief. Like, why would you do that to yourself? Like, you're probably operating at like half capacity. Like, mm-hmm. sleep is really important. It's the only thing that um, gives your body like that reset mm-hmm. cellularly, um, mm-hmm. you know, mentally, everything. And mm-hmm. we don't even understand sleep really. But I do know I need my sleep or I'm not going to be very happy the next day. Interesting. Um, In regards to sleep, I was told by somebody that I interviewed in the past that he basically tapped into really lucid dreaming. He went really deep with it, essentially, you know, messing with the astral realms and stuff like that. And he was able to bring back knowledge, superpowers, all this kind of stuff. Um, he was telling me that he had to suppress his dreams, like, you know, by, um, you know, taking, you know, marijuana and stuff like that um, to suppress his dreams. Um, you know, what what is your take on lucid dreaming? Do you think by lucid dreaming, it can actually like, you know, allow you to cultivate more energy and stuff like that? And like, you know, bring back more superpowers, if you will, because in the astral realms, you're pretty much the laws of physics aren't the same as here, you know, what, what, what is I've your only, take? Um, I've only astral projected two times. Um, and it took me a long time. I mean, it took me like four hours the first time I tried it and three hours the next time. And, um, yeah, it was, it was interesting because you see your body and it's freaky. Like 
stepping out and looking back at yourself laying in bed that is a weird thing like if you really do it that would freak anybody out like i was like it snapped me back in i walked through my bedroom window looked back and i saw my body and i freaked and i snapped right back in that was the first time um the second time I was actually able to go to a different country and you know fly and stuff and it was great but um i don't know what to think about um vivid dreams um you know i don't know what dreams are i uh, you know people have different theories i really don't know like i i haven't had any like i mean i think they're important but i don't know why so i don't know i don't really think it has anything to do with um training like everything that you do training wise you are conscious uh oh hey i'm gonna have to cut this short this okay. guy is my car so okay all right well thank you so much for this interview and uh um we'll we'll talk soon. okay see you again yeah see it i don't even know how to cut this thing i don't either well thanks for watching guys that was chris and that is it and uh, man, I miss doing this interview stuff, but I really, man, I'm so busy with life and I don't have the time to do this consistent on a consistent basis and stuff. And if I find the inspiration again, I will maybe get back into this work. So, but that was an amazing interview. And uh, thanks for watching the few people that have liked. It looks like Nico and Antonio LP and a few people have liked it. So cool, man. Thanks, guys, for watching. Um, this will probably be my last one. I keep saying that, likely because I'm way too busy with life and just don't have the time to be doing this on a consistent basis anymore. So, all right, guys, peace out. And uh, thank you, Chris, once again.